On screen are six different designs that represent six different fashion brands. Three of these designs, in all honesty, aren't that great. And three of them are masterpiece examples of logo design. But which three are good and which three are bad? What do you say? Let's start positive here and take a look at one logo I think is a true winner. And that is the Levi's logo. Levi Strauss created the brand back in 1848. But the logo we see today has been around since around the late 1960s. But why is it on my good list in today's video? The red bat-winged logo mark came about because it was seen on the pockets of the 501 jeans that they made. This logo is so iconic and it's so simple and also bold. And it's managed to stand the test of time for half a century and it still looks good today. The logo type is modern and hard hitting and I bet most people would recognize this logo if they saw only the bottom section without the logo type. That's how memorable and iconic it actually is. It does its job perfectly well for that brand. But let's take a look at the first logo on the naughty list for today's video. But what do you think that might be? And of course, these are just my personal opinions, but I am taking into consideration how the logo is from a technical standpoint and how it actually appeals to the target audience. The first logo is the Alexander McQueen logo. This brand is a high-end luxury fashion house from my neck of the woods, Britain. Now I have two main issues with this design. Firstly, there's no contrast in the two lines of logo type both in size and also typeface style. I mean, there is a little contrast in size, but not much really to speak about. This logo could have looked so much better if they carefully chose to include contrast in some kind of way. But the other issue is with the little C within the uppercase Q. Yeah, I get it. I know what they're trying to do here. It just comes across as amateurish and disrupts the reading experience. I do prefer the other logo design they have because I think this is more creative, it's more memorable, and it's on the right track. Good logo number two is Coco Chanel. Chanel have used the same typeface on their number five perfume since the 1920s, a full century. It's a beautiful typeface as well, and it was one that was made specifically for their brand. It is a great example of a sans serif that is modern, but also sophisticated, the letters are also quite broad, and this creates an air of clean sophistication for the brand. This is obviously ideal for a high-end fashion brand like Chanel, and it's really well thought out. The double C logo mark that we all know is really iconic, and it's a trend setter in the fashion sector. Hey, that kind of rhymes. But anyway, what about the second party pooper design today? The second bad design today is, unfortunately, Jimmy Choo. I actually really like a lot of the products this brand makes, but their logo, that's a different story. Firstly, I don't think the choice of typeface is that great, but I do get it. Jimmy Choo is a brand that has a sense of glamour and playful, daring spirit. So this typeface that is, yes, a bit quirky and has some class with a serif style does seem logical in this instance. However, I don't like how wide and rounded the O's are compared to the rest of the logo type. But still, the logo type isn't that bad. The truly bad part of this logo for me, personally, is the logo symbol. It comes across as cheap and just really lazy in my opinion, especially when the brand name is presented vertically along the C mark. It looks like Jimmy Choo has tried to hop onto the trend that Chanel created, and which other brands have also tried to run with. But to me, Jimmy Choo is the biggest failure out of all of these designs. Okay, so what is the third and final good design in this fashion sector. This brand isn't as high-end or luxurious as the others today, but it is a fashion brand nonetheless. Adidas's logo to me is hugely iconic and it just simply works so well. The three-step logo mark is good for various different reasons. Firstly, the shape psychology of slanted straight lines suggests movement, which is perfect for a sports brand, but it also represents kind of stepping up or climbing your hurdles to overcome them. And also the three lines do make a triangle, which is the strongest shape. Again, just playing into that strength of a sports brand. The logo type is iconic in ICT avant-garde gothic and it's been used this way for a long, long time. And that just leaves Armani as the last offending design today. And I don't actually mean the eagle variation of their logo because overall that's kind of a good design. So yeah, not that one. But this one here just really misses the mark in my opinion. My first issue here is the carefully chosen typeface doesn't work well with the symbol. The typeface is elegant and sophisticated, and yet the symbol is bold and just pretty lame. It really does look like something a logo designer would make at the beginning of their career. And yet the symbol just isn't iconic to me at all. 
Yeah, I get it. I can see what they were trying to do with the G and so on. But to me, it's really forgettable and doesn't represent the brand at all. At least the eagle symbol variation is iconic and it does suggest an air of sophistication, power and elegance, something the Armani brand is trying to go for. But do you agree with my opinions in today's video? And if you actually want to learn about my logo design process, then just click the video on screen. And until next time, guys, design your future today. Peace.